I want to bring in another person who's a maven in the markets and a maven with politics, David Bonson and the Bonson Group, who's the managing director there. All right, so David, obviously you're an astute political watcher along with these markets. How do you see the midterms going and the implications for the economy and the stock market? You know, I think that the fact that the House was going to switch Republican pretty much all year enabled the market to price in all year the reality of some divided government. The question of what the Senate does has been totally impossible to discount because it's going to be so tight. I happen to think the Republicans are likely to take the Senate. We could debate if it's 51, 52, mm -hmm. or 53, but, you know, that's been right around the 50-50 mark, mm -hmm. and technically it still could be. We don't know exactly how it'll play out. Right. So the market can't price that in, Charles. But see, there isn't much of a difference in terms of gridlock between the Republicans having both chambers or only one chamber. Either way, we're going to get gridlock. So I don't expect there to be a big change over that issue. I got you. What I would like to see in the market is some belief that the committees and that the overall public sentiment are overwhelmingly moving to a pro-free enterprise, pro-energy, pro-market orientation. That may happen, but we have to wait and see the results. I think, I think something like that's going to take time. I, I believe the, the public is sort of wait and see, and they've got so many conflicting messages. But they do understand the pain that they've suffered in the last couple of years economically. Uh, on that point, Goldman Sachs out saying that they're still, uh, according to them, quote, very plausible that we could avoid a recession. They've got a high probability of a soft landing. Do you sense that's still possible? It is definitely possible, but I don't think anyone should be predicting that it will happen or arbitrarily assigning percentage odds. I always love it when these Wall Street <laughs> firms say there's a 35 percent chance or something as if they have any way of really quantifying um, if you stick the landing, so to speak, meaning that they end up tightening monetary policy, getting to start go easy again with monetary policy without seeing unemployment spike higher. Right. right. If that happens, it will be luck. It will take luck. Right. I mean, there is no possible way that you can blow out credit spreads, see mortgage rates go way higher, uh, tighten financial conditions, and not expect that there's a high probability of recessionary activity. Hey, David, I got less than a minute to go. Uh, you've been ahead of this dividend thing for a long time. Everyone is playing catch up. Look how much money is being poured into dividends right now. Just, uh, you know, someone's trying to do this for the first time. What's the one thing people should understand? Your entry point of your dividend yield matters. So a lot of the dividend companies that have done real well, their, lower, their yield might be lower right now because of high stock price. So you want to look at your entry level yield and the expected growth of that dividend over time. It's not one or the other. It's both a good entry level yield and an expectation of growth of that dividend over time. And you will not go wrong. And it's not a trade. It is not a play. It's a long term investment philosophy. All right. Well, a lot of people are getting that religion right now for sure. David, thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate it.